My BF of nine months treats me like a stranger in public. I plan his birthday party, and he barely acknowledges me. Then I catch him getting too cozy with a female coworker. My 26F boyfriend, Simon, 28M, acts like a different person around others, and it's tearing me apart. We met through a mutual friend at a local art gallery opening. I was there supporting my best friend, Sarah, who had a few pieces on display. Simon was this tall, dark-haired guy with the most infectious laugh I'd ever heard. He spent the whole night asking me about my favorite artists and cracking jokes about the more abstract pieces. By the end of the evening, I was smitten. Our first few months together were like something out of a romance novel. Simon was attentive, caring, and seemed genuinely interested in every aspect of my life. He'd surprise me with little gifts. My favorite coffee when I was stressed about work. A book by an author I'd mentioned liking. We'd spend whole weekends curled up on the couch, binging shows and ordering takeout. It felt like I'd known him my whole life. Simon works as a software engineer at a big tech company downtown. He's brilliant and driven, always talking about new projects he's working on. I'm a kindergarten teacher, and Simon would listen to me ramble about my students' latest art projects or playground drama with genuine interest. He even volunteered to come in for career day and talk to the kids about computers. Seeing him interact with my class, all patient smiles and dad jokes made my heart melt. But lately, I've noticed something that's really starting to gnaw at me. It's like Simon becomes a completely different person when we're around other people, especially his friends or coworkers. The warm, caring guy I fell in love with disappears, replaced by this cold, almost dismissive version of himself. I first noticed it about three months into our relationship. We were at a barbecue hosted by one of Simon's college buddies, Mark. I didn't know many people there, so I was sticking pretty close to Simon. At one point, I came up to the group he was chatting with and gave him a little side hug, expecting him to put his arm around me or at least acknowledge me. Instead, he barely glanced my way and kind of shrugged me off. I figured maybe he was just caught up in the conversation, but then it kept happening throughout the night. Another incident stands out in my mind. We were grabbing coffee one Saturday morning when we ran into Simon's boss. Simon immediately straightened up, his whole demeanor changing. When his boss asked who I was, Simon introduced me as a friend instead of his girlfriend. I felt like I'd been slapped. Later, when I brought it up, Simon brushed it off, saying he likes to keep his personal and professional lives separate. But it still stung. The contrast between private Simon and public Simon is giving me whiplash. When we're alone, he's constantly checking if I need anything. He'll make me tea if I mention having a sore throat or offer to pick up my favorite snacks if he's going to the store. He sends me cute text messages throughout the day and always asks about how I'm feeling. But around others, it's like I don't even exist. Last week, we were at a party at Mark's place. I hadn't eaten dinner because Simon had told me there'd be food at the party, but it turned out to be just chips and dip. After a couple of hours, I was starving. I whispered to Simon that I was getting really hungry. His response? He barely glanced at me and said, there's a takeout place down the street, in the most dismissive tone. No offer to go with me or even ask what I wanted. It was like he couldn't be bothered to deal with me at all. I've tried to talk to Simon about this behavior multiple times. The first time, about two months ago, I gently brought up how I felt like he was different around his friends. Simon seemed surprised and said he hadn't noticed any change in his behavior. He promised to be more aware of it in the future, but nothing changed. If anything, it got worse. At a work event for my school, Simon was on his phone most of the night, barely engaging with my colleagues. When I introduced him to my principal, he gave a half-hearted handshake and mumbled a greeting before excusing himself to get a drink. I was mortified. Our most recent conversation about this was last week, after the party at Mark's. I tried to be more direct, giving specific examples of times when his actions hurt me. Simon claims he still doesn't see it and says he's trying his best not to come across as cold which honestly baffles me. How can he not see the night and day difference in how he treats me? It's starting to make me feel really insecure. I put a lot of effort into our relationship. For his birthday last month, I threw him this big surprise party. I spent weeks planning it, coordinating with his friends, decorating his apartment, getting his favorite cake from this bakery across town that always has a two hour line. I was so excited to celebrate him and show everyone how much I care. But even then with all our friends watching, he was so distant, barely a hug, no PDA, Nothing. I felt like such an idiot gushing over this guy who seemed totally uninterested in me. I'm worried people are going to start thinking our relationship is one-sided, like I'm this clingy girlfriend and Simon is just tolerating me. It's embarrassing and it hurts. My friend Sarah has started making comments, asking if everything is okay between Simon and me. I found myself making excuses for his behavior, saying he's just shy in public or not big on PDA. But the truth is, I'm starting to doubt everything. I don't know if I'm overreacting or if this is a real problem. Part of me wonders if maybe Simon is embarrassed by me for some reason. I know he comes from a wealthier background than I do. His parents are both lawyers and he grew up in this fancy suburb. I've always been self-conscious about my more modest upbringing. Could that be it? 
Or is he trying to seem cool in front of his friends by acting aloof? We're both in our mid-twenties, though, so that seems kind of immature. I'm at a loss for what to do. I love Simon, and when we're alone, things are amazing. He's supportive of my career. He makes me laugh, and I can really see a future with him. But I can't keep feeling like a stranger every time we're in public. It's like I'm dating two different people, and I'm only allowed to acknowledge one of them depending on who else is around. I've thought about ending things, but the idea of losing Simon breaks my heart. Maybe I'm not being understanding enough? Should I be more patient? Or am I setting myself up for a lifetime of feeling second best and unimportant? Has anyone dealt with something similar? Any advice on how to approach this with Simon again? I feel like I'm going crazy, doubting what I see with my own eyes. I just want my boyfriend to be proud to be with me, no matter who's watching. Update 1. First, I want to thank everyone who commented on my original post. Your insights and advice really helped me gain some perspective on the situation with Simon. It was comforting to know I wasn't alone in feeling this way, and many of you gave me the courage to confront the issue head on. After reading through all the comments, I realized I needed to have another serious talk with Simon about his behavior. I decided to approach it differently this time. Instead of just telling him how I felt, I prepared a list of specific examples of times when his actions hurt me, complete with dates and details. We sat down last weekend and I laid it all out. I told him about the party at Mark's place, how dismissive he was when I said I was hungry. I brought up his birthday and how rejected I felt after putting in so much effort. I even mentioned smaller incidents, like how he barely acknowledges me when we run into his coworkers at the grocery store. As I was talking, I could see Simon's face going through a range of emotions. Surprise, defensiveness, and finally, something that looked like guilt. When I finished, there was this long, uncomfortable silence. I was terrified he was going to brush me off again or tell me I was imagining things. But then, Simon did something I wasn't expecting. He started to cry. I'd never seen him cry before, not even when we watched sad movies together. It was like a dam had broken. Through his tears, Simon finally opened up about what's been going on. It turns out, he has some deep-seated insecurities about relationships stemming from his past. He told me about his last serious girlfriend, Emma, who he dated for three years in college. Apparently, Emma cheated on him with one of his close friends, a guy named Chris. Simon described how Emma would be really affectionate with him in public, always hanging on his arm and kissing him in front of their friends. But behind his back, she was seeing Chris. Simon found out in the worst way possible. He walked in on them at a party, in the bedroom of the house he shared with Chris. The betrayal devastated Simon. He said he spent months replaying every interaction, wondering how he could have been so blind. He started to associate public displays of affection with fakeness and betrayal. In his mind, real, genuine love was something private, not something you showcase to the world. Simon admitted that ever since then, he's been terrified of appearing whipped or too invested in a relationship in front of others. He said he knows it's irrational, but he can't shake the fear that if he shows too much affection in public, history will repeat itself. As he was telling me all this, I felt a mix of emotions. On one hand, I was relieved to finally understand where his behavior was coming from. It wasn't about me being embarrassing or not good enough. Simon was battling his own demons. But on the other hand, I felt hurt and frustrated. I'm not Emma. I've never given Simon any reason not to trust me, and it's painful to realize he's been punishing me for someone else's actions. I've spent months feeling insecure and unloved in public, all because of a fear Simon never shared with me. We talked for hours that night, really diving into how his past has affected our relationship. Simon promised he would work on being more affectionate in public and not letting his past trauma dictate our future. He even suggested we could come up with some subtle gestures or code words for when we're out, so he can show he cares without feeling too vulnerable. Simon also opened up about some family issues that have contributed to his behavior. Apparently, his parents have a very cold, almost business-like relationship in public. He grew up thinking that was normal, that real emotions were something you only showed behind closed doors. I want to believe things will get better, but I'm still feeling pretty hurt and confused. Simon's behavior wasn't okay, even if there was a reason behind it. Part of me wonders if I can ever fully trust that he's proud to be with me when we're around others. Will I always be second-guessing his actions, wondering if he's slipping back into old patterns? For now, we're going to try working through this together. Simon said he'd be open to talking to a therapist about his trust issues if things don't improve on their own. I'm cautiously optimistic, but I'm also trying to protect my heart a little. We've made plans to go to a friend's engagement party next weekend. It'll be our first big social event since having this conversation. I'm nervous about how it will go, but also hopeful that we can start to turn a corner. I'll keep you all updated on how things progress. Again, thank you for all your support and advice. It really means a lot to have this community to turn to when I'm feeling lost. Update two. I wish I had better news to share, but things with Simon have taken a turn for the worse. About a week after our big talk, Simon and I went to his friend Tom's engagement party. I was nervous but hopeful that he'd make an effort to be more affectionate in public like we'd discussed. 
We even came up with a little signal, three quick squeezes of the hand, that Simon could use to show he was thinking of me if he felt uncomfortable with more overt displays of affection. At first, things seemed okay. Simon held my hand as we walked into the venue, a trendy rooftop bar downtown. He introduced me to a few people from his office, actually using the word girlfriend this time. I started to relax, thinking maybe we had turned a corner. But as the night went on, Simon started drinking. A lot. I've never seen him get that drunk before. We've had wine with dinner or a few beers at parties, but this was different. He was doing shots with his college buddies and accepting every drink that was handed to him. As he got more intoxicated, his behavior became erratic. One minute, he'd be all over me, sloppily kissing my cheek and telling everyone within earshot how lucky he was. The next, he'd be cold and dismissive, acting annoyed if I tried to talk to him. It was like watching him toggle between two completely different people. The breaking point came when one of Simon's female coworkers, Melissa, arrived late to the party. I recognized her from company photos on Simon's social media, but I'd never met her in person. As soon as she walked in, Simon's entire demeanor changed. He practically ran over to greet her, leaving me mid-conversation with another couple. I watched as he hugged Melissa, his hand lingering a little too long on her lower back. They launched into some inside joke, laughing like they were the only two people in the room. I felt like I was watching my worst fears play out in real time. For the rest of the night, Simon was glued to Melissa's side. He was laughing at all her jokes, touching her arm, completely ignoring me. When I tried to join their conversation, Simon acted like I was interrupting. At one point, I overhead him introduce me to someone as my friend, Sarah. Not even getting my name right. I was hurt and humiliated. This was worse than him being cold or distant. It felt like I was watching him actively choose someone else over me, right in front of my eyes. All our talks, all his promises to do better seemed to evaporate in the face of this woman. After about an hour of this, I couldn't take it anymore. I told Simon I wasn't feeling well and wanted to go home. He barely looked at me as he said, okay, see you later, and turned back to Melissa. He didn't even offer to come with me or check if I had a safe way to get home. I left the party in tears, feeling completely betrayed. This wasn't just about him being cold in public anymore. This felt like a complete disregard for our relationship and my feelings. I took an Uber home, crying the whole way and ignoring concerned looks from the driver. The next morning, Simon called me, full of apologies. He claimed he didn't remember much of the night and that he never meant to hurt me. He swore nothing was going on with Melissa and that he was just drunk and stupid. He begged for another chance, saying he'd stop drinking altogether if that's what it took. But I can't shake what I saw. Even if nothing physical happened with Melissa, the way he treated me was unacceptable. I feel like all the progress we thought we made after our talk was just an illusion. Maybe Simon's issues run deeper than either of us realized. I've asked Simon for some space while I figure out what I want to do. Part of me still loves him and wants to believe we can work through this. We've invested nine months in this relationship, and when things are good, they're really good. But a bigger part is realizing that I deserve someone who's proud to be with me, drunk or sober, in private or in public. I'm tired of making excuses for Simon's behavior. I'm tired of feeling like I'm not good enough, like I'm something to be hidden away when other people are around. I've been talking to my friend Sarah a lot over the past few days. She's been amazingly supportive, reminding me of all the times Simon has made me feel small or unimportant. She thinks I should end things for good, but I'm struggling with the decision. I'm not sure what my next move will be. Do I give Simon one last chance to prove he can change? Do I walk away now before I get hurt even more? The thought of breaking up makes my chest ache, but staying in this cycle doesn't seem healthy either. For now, I'm taking it day by day. I've thrown myself into work, staying late to prep for my class's end of year art show. It's a welcome distraction from the chaos in my personal life. I know I have some soul searching to do. I need to figure out if I can ever truly trust Simon again, or if this experience has irreparably damaged our relationship. I'm trying to listen to my gut, but right now it's sending some very mixed signals. Thank you all again for your support throughout this whole ordeal. It means more than you know to have a place to share my thoughts and feelings. I'll update again once I've made a decision about the future of our relationship.